Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about the Zwiftalyzer benchmarks updates for 2024. I've overhauled Zwiftalyzer benchmarks database to give you a more up-to-date picture of how well the game runs on different computers, especially as performance has been getting worse over time on PCs. In the benchmarks report, the entries you see represents the activities with the highest average FPS for those specific conditions. This means you're looking at the best case scenario for that hardware combination in the given world for a graphics profile and resolution. Before this update, each entry was the best case scenario for the past two to three years, and that's the problem. Performance on the PC has gradually gotten worse since 2022, and the stats haven't changed, which means the entries are misleading because how well a system performed in 2022 is not how it performs now. To address this issue, I've added year and quarter to every entry. With this update, the database now provides an always up to date, more realistic guide on what FPS you can expect from a CPU and GPU combination for a world and crowd size resolution and profile. Incidentally, for Mac users, performance has significantly improved in recent game releases because of the move to Apple Silicon native binaries and the Metal Graphics library. And those entries were always accurately represented because new uploads were overwriting the old data as expected. To provide you with the most relevant information, I've set the default selections for year to the most current year and for the quarter to the all quarters in the year. This way, you'll immediately see the latest data when you access the benchmarks, even if it's a new quarter and there isn't much data yet. If you're interested in historical data and want to compare different periods, you can adjust these settings to suit your needs. I know many Zwiftalyzer users are particularly interested in understanding how well a CPU and GPU combination handles the most demanding scenarios like Mercury Islands at 4K Ultra Profile with 100% crowding. So that's why I've chosen those as specific conditions for the new defaults. Recognizing that different users have different preferences for data exploration, I've designed the interface to be clean and focused. For those who want to dive deeper, an advanced options feature now exists, which with one click, you can access additional filters like crowd size, year and quarter, enabling you to refine the results to gain the specific insights that you're looking for. Also, now when you're browsing the benchmarks report results, you can click on an entry, and this action will take you to a detailed view showing all activities for that particular CPU and GPU combination within the selected year and quarter. And this is a great way to dive deeper and understand how performance changes at different crowd sizes. This view can be quite valuable, offering insights into how consistently a particular setup performs and highlights any potential variances you might expect with that PC, CPU, GPU combination. Let's look at some examples. So first up, where has the crowding score gone? That is under the show advanced options. There's a new drop down there. Fondo, packed, crowded, company, etc. The default is a 100% highest crowding and the current year, all quarters. So I'll leave that as is. Let's take a look at flipping the world. Let's go to New York. Nobody, nobody loves New York. I, I love New York. So yeah, not, not many not many entries. Uh, look at Watopia, far more entries. So ju just so generally, this is how you, you know operate the drop downs. Pretty pretty straightforward. If that if that needs explaining, then I've failed. Okay, let's go back to the Mercury Islands because that is the most challenging world. That is what you really want to check because if the CPU GPU performance is good here, it'll be good everywhere else. So Ultra 4K, let's take a look at the results now. So not surprising, a Core i9 and an RTX 4090 is top. I mean, that's not that's not very illuminating. Obviously, a really high-end rig is going to perform really well. The aim of Zwiftalyzer has always been to find the most cost-effective, highest-performance machine. My machine is in my garage. It's dusty, it's cold, it's damp. I didn't want to spend a lot on a machine. I used an old office PC with a GTX uh 750 Ti originally. So what is in interesting though, if you scroll down, number round about number five or six, you start to see the Core i3, 12th generation, the 12100F. That is $90. I've talked about this before. That, that's a really cost-effective CPU. 
and it's hanging with the Core i9 and the Core i5s because Zwift is so single core, kind of uses a single core most of the time. So on a 24 core Core i9, most of those cores are doing absolutely nothing. So Core i3 is, is a great CPU starting point. Then add to that an RTX. You don't need an RTX. Mine's a 1660 Super, which I think is in here somewhere, or 6060 Ti, pretty close. And it can hold 60 FPS most of the time. Occasional dips down, but that's, you know, that's where I kind of draw the line, the sweet spot. I don't actually use 4K. I use 1440. So let's take a look at that. So this is this is the this is really the sweet spot. This is where I really advise most people like focus their uh, money and you know buy a system around these kind of specs. Okay, um, this is I don't want to go repeat stuff I've already done. So let, let's take a look at another few entries that, that highlight what changes I've made. So let's let's keep it on 4K. Let's go back to that 4K. I'm interested in the high category because this is where Macs show up. The M1 Mac Silicon, Apple Silicon is really, really quite impressive, but and is not on the ultra profile, but they do do 4K resolution. You know what? The difference isn't that big. It's not a big deal anyway, so I wouldn't stress it. The top one there, it is 60 FPS because the crowding is 80, 83%. But when you've got the full crowd around you, like 100 riders around you, it dips down to 53 and then the last one on the list there with the 30 FPS, that's almost certainly on battery with the battery saver enabled, locked on at 30 FPS. So again, kind of interesting, but not super illuminating. So what else can we talk about? Well, let's go, let's go low end. Let's go Watopia. Not that that's a low end. It's just, you know, a very popular world. Um, basic. And go down to the 720 HD and th th this is the Intel onboard graphics and uh, holding this 100% uh, crowd but if you go lower than that let's say you know the solo rides you start to see HD graphics like Intel onboard graphics yeah and some Adreno which would be in Mali those would be Android uh that's not bad. 46 average. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, interesting there. Pentium Gold with onboard graphics, 44. So, you know, Android and a low-end Intel CPU, they're kind of, you know, bleh. <laughs> yeah, not not my not my thing. You know, I, I, you know, I made this because I wanted to get high performance, I mean, obviously. Uh, okay. So I think the rest is self-explanatory. If you, if you know how year and quarter works, you know, it's a, you know, div divisions into three months. Did not go into the granularity of each game release. That would have just been too many, uh, and too many keys to, and too much granular, too sparse data. Search. On to search. A couple of things here that I might not have mentioned before. You can search GPU name, like, you know, 2070, uh, 40, let's do a 4690 CPU. So you would use this if you know a CPU and GPU that maybe you've seen for sale and you want to know how it's going to perform. So 4690K. Okay, that, so that's a couple of stop. <laughs> do that again. Let's do a 4690K. Okay, there's 55,000 entries in here, so I'm surprised that didn't come up with anything in 2070. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, let's do 1060 then. Okay, good. So there are a couple of things I haven't mentioned before. You can also search by world. So all those results would be London. And you can do uh, negation or exclusion. So let's think of a good one here. On 1060, no, it's not a good, good example. Um, what were we doing earlier? Um, somebody wanted to know 3060, but not the TI. So minus DI. Yeah, that, that works. And let's do that one more time. This time, just the 3060. The end there, there's the TI at the top. So you can exclude things. You can tune to what you want. Those are a few ways how you can interact with data and hopefully find the results you're looking for. 
please leave a comment if you have suggestions or you're not able to find what you need or even if you did and you had a good result It'd be interesting to hear about it okay let's go back to that other boring guy my name is mike and i've really enjoyed creating these benchmarks over eight years uh, it, the quality of the data really depends on your uploads so please continue to upload to zwiftalyzer.com and please like and subscribe to support the channel and the Zwiftalyzer project See you all out on Zwift soon, hopefully, when I recover from my hamstring injury. Yeah, more about that some other time. Uh, do your stretches, uh, do your warm-ups properly. Uh, don't be me. <laughs> okay, have fun. Bye, everyone.